Hello and welcome. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create repetition in Visual Basic. There's really three ways you can do it. There's do while, there's do and tell, and there are for loops. All looping structures. I'm going to start off with do while loops because I think they're the most intuitive. They are not necessarily the least amount of code, but I think they're the easiest to understand. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a program that addresses this situation here. I want to output odd numbers between 1 and 50 to a list box. So it's assumed that you know how to add things to a list box. If you don't, you'll pick it up pretty quickly. Uh, also going to need to understand the concept of variables. This is going to be a pretty low level video, so I'm hoping you probably just jump in and follow along. So I'm going to head on over to Visual Basic Express 2010. I'm going to create a new form and I'm going to call it uh, loop, I guess. and It'll be fine. And I'm going to create a form. That form is going to have a list box. right? So if you're unfamiliar with a list box, well, I'll show you how these work. My list box needs a name other than list box one. I'm going to call LST, how about items? And presumably I want this form to run off of a button. Here's my button. My button needs a name, like button go, and a text like go, and that's obviously not particularly meaningful, but it's a good idea to create a form that could be used by someone, even if it's not going to be. So now, this is my form. Uh, now I'm going to go to the code design. So there's not a lot to this, actually. It's, it's mostly conceptual. So I'm going to create a loop. Now the idea, uh, if you're new to loops, we're going to have to have a counter. We have to have a keep. Basically, we're going to be repeating a couple lines of code over and over again. We don't want to uh, repeat them an infinite amount of times. That's known as an infinite loop, and that's a problem. So we need a counter. So counters are typically named i, and type integer makes sense. And then we're also going to initialize it to, let's say, 0. If you don't initialize it, it's going to get set to 0 anyways. Let's just explicitly do that. i is not a good name for a variable. However, counters are almost always named i. And if you can't use i, then j or k are usually what you would use. So i got to have a counter. There's my counter. Now onto the syntax of the loop. So my syntax is pretty easy. It's do while all right so i want to do this section of code while something is true all right that's implied that's what a do while loops all about so i want to do while i which is the name of my counter let's just say i want to do less than 10 and we'll kind of see how this behaves i press enter my loop completes this is essentially a looping structure and just kind of looking at the heading here it looks like i want to do something 10 times i want to start at zero and i want to count to 10 more or less so inside of my loop here I also need to do something which is called incrementing my counter. So essentially, i starts off at 0, and I go down here and I want to do this while 0 is less than 10. It certainly is. Um, then something's going to go here. We're going to hit this point, jump back up to here, and i is, guess what? i is still 0, right? And then it's just going to keep doing this as fast as it can over and over again, never going to stop unless I do something like this. Notice I did not use the shorthand because I want to be really explicit about this. So I said, hey, i was 0, so 0 equals 0 plus 1. This is my way of saying add 1 to i every time we go through the loop. This is what stops us from having an infinite loop. So, oh, and it's called list. I forget what my stuff's called. List items dot items dot add. And what I want to add is i, right? Kind of an abstract concept. My counter, or my, uh, my variable here is what I'm going to add. Let's run this and see what it does. I run it, and I get 0 through 9, which I don't know if that's what I expected. Um, if your program doesn't do anything at all, it's probably because you have an infinite loop going. You need to recognize that and just stop debugging because it's not going to stop running. So if, if this part was absent, it would just never stop. So let's say I wanted to print out between 1 and 10. It didn't. It went between 0 and 9. If I want it to start at 1, then I should initialize my counter to 1. Right? We started at 0. That's where the 0 came from. And if you notice, it stopped at 9 because at some point I got, it was 8, and it said 8 equals 8 plus 1 is 9, and 9 was less than 10. And then we got down here and it said 9 plus 1 is 10. And then we looped back up here in 10. 10 was not less than 10. Instead, if we wanted to actually jump into the loop, we can do two things. We can either make this 11, 
where we can make it less than or equal to 10. And this is probably going to give us what we want. And now we're going between 1 and 10. So notice when I manipulated this, there's really only a couple things going on. There's, there's five lines. There's these four and this one. You've got a starting value, right? And that's defined here. You've got a ending value. And you've got something that you're counting by, right? You usually count by ones. Uh, sometimes you go backwards, sometimes you go forward. But you could count by something else. I'm going to revisit that original problem. So now I want to go to that list box. I want to print out between 1 and 50 odd numbers. So let's think about how we can do that. Do I want to start at 1? Yes. I need to change this number to 50, essentially, because I want to go up to 50. And so this is going to add out every, this is going to output every number between 1 and 50. I guess probably what I want to do here is sounds like I want to count by twos. Can I do that? Um, I don't know why I wouldn't be able to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at 1, and I'm going to skip over every even number. So it's going to be 1 in the first case. I'm going to print a 1. We're going to add 2. It's going to become 3. 3 is less than 50. We're going to add a 3, and so on. So let's run this thing and see how it works. I run it, and that looks like a list of numbers that is odd and between 1 and 50. Let's say we wanted to do even numbers. Well, even numbers kind of implies we're counting by 2s. Just the difference would be we're starting at 2. And let's run this thing. And notice, pretty powerful. I'm getting 25 pieces of output from just changing one variable. And you can see it's behaving as it should. And that's all, we ask. That's all we were trying to do here. In my next video, I'll show you do and tell loop, which is logically the same. It's just instead of while, we're going to use until. We're going to look at the implications of that. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to do, I did while, I'm going to do until next, and then I'll do a for loop. And depending on time, I'll, I'll do some more interesting examples. Thanks for watching.